Welcome back to another episode of Illegal Studies Teacher Reads the News. Looking today at this article that appeared uh, yesterday, that is Friday, oh, sorry, it was Thursday, the 1st of October yesterday, calls to make bushfire warnings easier to access for Victorians who don't speak English at home. Now, I want to talk about this issue because it's quite helpful for preliminary legal studies. So this is an example of what you might do for law in practice. It's a contemporary issue that illustrates how the law operates in practice. And it's looking about this idea of, I'd probably say, the responsiveness of the legal system in dealing with issues and the effectiveness of legal and non-legal mechanisms in achieving justice for individuals and society. So what's happening here? So this is, a, this is all there is for this unit. It's a unit that can be incorporated into uh, the earlier units. And uh, a lot of teachers do it that way. Or, or they just have it as a separate and they do two separate kind of issues. But students are supposed to synthesize information from a range of sources, including cases, legislation, media, you know, instruments, etc., to support a legal argument. What's happening here? I'm going to look at the question and I'm going to look at this article as a way of teaching students about Hampera, H-A-M-P-E-R-R-A, uh, -E -R -R the criteria that we use to evaluate effectiveness of the legal system. And this is a really good article for two, for accessibility and for responsiveness. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So this is Amina. Uh, she is uh, regularly called upon to translate phone calls for her community. She's a Rohingya uh, and she is a go-to translator for her community in the Latrobe Valley. Let's, let's have a read. The Victorian government is being urged to make bushfire information more accessible for non-English speaking people before the summer fire season begins. Amina Katan, 25, is the go-to translator for her Rohingya community in the Latrobe Valley, that's in Victoria. On a daily basis, her exasperated friends and family will call in at home, sometimes unannounced, pass her a phone and ask her to bridge the gap between English and Rohingya. Usually it is correspondence from lawyers, utility retailers and government agencies that need to be translated. So, so this is Amina and she's offering a free service Obviously, and, and the idea that is being passed across here quite quite clearly is that uh, the government should be doing this, that this is not Amina's job, that these services should be available by the government for these people in Australia to access in their own language. If there's, a, if there's enough people that speak a language other than English, then, then surely the government should be doing its utmost to make sure that information is available. It continues, but it's during emergencies like the COVID-19 pandemic and bushfires that her community has come to rely on her most. So that's the normal situation. And this is happening now more often, or it's more important, I should say, because of COVID-19 and bushfires. Certainly last year, when the bushfires happened, most of them here, they didn't understand how to keep themselves safe from the smoke and what to do in that situation, Ms. Katan said. She said recorded video and audio translations of emergency information by a community leader or interpreter worked best for her community because theirs was primarily a spoken language. Okay, so here's this issue, this question of accessibility. So we're looking at topics that may be studied. For example, here's migrants. Uh, so, so there's this question of, well, do we actually know the community well enough to know that they, they may not actually be a community that reads a lot? And this is exactly uh, what Amina says. My community don't read and write, so they are illiterate. Our language is only verbal. So I think for my community, we just need a recorded message into Rohingya language. It's important because as a wider Australian, we have a right to understand the message and then we will know what to do, what to expect. So there's this question of achieving justice here that we're talking about. We're talking about the responsiveness of the legal, legal system and the relationship between uh, kind of justice and law and society, uh, what kind of role does the legal system play in ensuring, does the government play in ensuring that all of its citizens can actually understand urgent and crucial messages around pandemics or bushfires? Get the message right. The LOAT, language other than English, agency in Melbourne, has been conducting research with multicultural communities in the past 10 years. Its most recent study commissioned by the Victorian government identified key failings in the way bushfire information was delivered to people who did not speak or understand English well. Whether it's a pandemic, a bushfire, a flood, or any kind of natural disaster or critical health message that needs to come out from the government, it needs to go out in a number of considered 
ways, General Manager David Bartlett said. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution for multicultural communities. So here's this, this question that, that really, that when it comes to responsiveness of the legal system in dealing with issues, the issue here is that in an urgent situation, in a disaster, if there's a critical health message, it needs to go out in a variety of ways to make sure that all citizens are able to understand it. Mr. Bartlett said improving emergency communications for multicultural Victorians was not as simple as translating information in multiple languages because some languages were more spoken than written. Every single community has nuances in how they trust and consume information with English speaking comms, he said. It's very easy to put things in multiple websites on paid media, but a multi at a multicultural level, there also needs to be actual grassroots engagement with communities. So this is not just this concept of yeah, we're, we're you know, dealing with 120 languages because we've got a, a website and someone translates it in there and we just get it, some developer to, to, to chuck it all into the, you know, the, the back end of the, of the website and it's fine, they can access it. Well, what if the community doesn't use computers all that much? What if they're not literate like the Rohingya community? We need to find a way of getting that message out that is other than here it is on a website. Mr. Bartlett said the state government's failure communicating with culturally and linguistically diverse communities was highlighted during the pandemic when a poster about using face masks failed to differentiate between two different languages, Farsi and Arabic, which share a similar alphabet. It did shine a spotlight on the gaps between the government and how they message multicultural communities. He said timely emergency advice during bushfires was even more important. You might have minutes to act before you can get out of your home. And what we saw during the pandemic is that it took days or even weeks to get information to communities. And unfortunately, that's just not acceptable during a bushfire season. I just call on the Andrews government to invest more heavily to provide one and a half million Victorians. So that's how many Victorians are non-English speaking with access to the information they need to go into a bushfire season, feeling safe at home and knowing that they can get information in their language when they need it to keep their family family safe. I mean, that is a crucial issue, isn't it? This is this is the big problem. We've got we've got fires due to climate change. A very controversial statement there. I apologise. Fires getting worse due to climate change, and so the Victoria and the New South Wales government really need to ensure that all of their processes are in place to ensure that human life is kept safe at all times. And if that's the case, well, then everyone needs to be able to receive information that they can understand and process and act on within minutes. So how does the government do that in a multicultural society? It's a really crucial piece of information for the safety of many Australian citizens who don't speak English. Confusion for new Victorians. Victorians have come to rely on the Victorian emergency phone app in times of distress, but it's only in English. This is a perfect opportunity to develop that app and make it available to all Victorians, regardless of language or location, Mr. Bartlett said. Ethnic Community Council of Victoria Chair Eddie McAuliffe said the state's new and emergent communities were most at risk of missing vital bushfire information this summer unless improvements were made. Some of the Africans, Sudanese, Somalians and some of the Asian communities certainly need special attention and increased support, he said. The authorities have been aware of these challenges for quite a long time. It's getting a response to these challenges that has been a bit slow. And this is where we're looking at if we're evaluating the government's response. So accessibility is a key area here. If you don't speak English particularly well, there's a problem here with accessibility. You're not able to access the crucial, urgent emergency information about bushfires or the pandemic problems. Now we're looking at responsiveness. According to Eddie McAuliffe, this is a problem that's been known for years. And so it's a question of responsiveness. We've always had bushfires. We've always had this problem as Australia's become more and more multicultural, why is it still an issue? Why have they not worked out? It's not like the languages have changed. It's just that there's been a slow response to changing it, uh, to, to fixing the problem. Until that happens, multicultural communities, leaders like Mrs. Katan continue to voluntarily fill the gap. And there's that question, she, sh she shouldn't, should she? She shouldn't have to. Emergency Management Victoria conceded the Victorian Emergency App was currently only off of English. But in a statement, EMV Commissioner Andrew Crisp said anyone who called the Victorian Emergency Telephone Hotline in need of translation support was put through to the Commonwealth Translating and Interpreting Service, 
We also utilize a wide range of media channels, including local community radio and social media, to promote targeted in-language warnings, emergency information, and advertising, he said. So that's that's Andrew Crisp responding to this question of of, of this, uh, the government not being responsive enough. I guess you've got to ask that question in an emergency. How well, you know, I'm not sure if there's a bushfire coming. Do I have minutes to, to leave or, or not? You're going to call the, the hotline and ask to be brought through to the translation service and then work out which translator you need. And then I'm not sure that's going to happen particularly well. And so this question here is, well, how intentional is this? A wide range of media channels, including community, local community radio and social media. Does the government have that? Do they have maps where they can tell which community radio stations are most prevalent for people with certain languages and, and certain uh, ethnicities are strong in that community and therefore they're going to call and they're going to use that local radio to let people know? Or is it just slapdash, we just will see what we see? As you can see, a really, really crucial information and it really shows nicely I love that word, really. You'll, you'll hear that all the time. It shows nicely this question of law in practice, doesn't it? It's a contemporary issue. It illustrates how the law operates in practice. This question of accessibility, it's the government's responsibility to ensure that crucial information during an emergency comes to all its citizens so that they can act on it for their safety's sake. And if they don't speak English, then it's the government's responsibility to, A, help them learn to speak English. That's a different I issue altogether. But most importantly, in those emergency situations, to get the message across in their language so they can keep their family safe during a bushfire, during a pandemic, etc., etc. We've got a couple examples. We've got absolute English. We've got problems with Farsi and Arabic being mixed up when it comes to crucial face mask information. We've got examples of them failing responsiveness and accessibility as two criteria. And it's this uh, ability for students to evaluate the effectiveness, therefore, and say, overall, how well is the government doing in this issue? How could it do better? So hopefully that's a, that's a helpful example for legal studies, preliminary teachers and students thinking through how to do law in practice for a really contemporary issue that has propped up in Victoria and I'm sure is prevalent in New South Wales as well.